Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. What started as a normal experience getting gas ends with a near death experience and a trip to the hospital for a local San Antonio man. What San Antonio police tell us happened. It's the season of giving and the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center needs your help. Coming up details on the blood supply situation in San Antonio. In the middle of the holiday season, but instead of getting gifts, how about helping out? Ashley Harris from Leadership San Antonio Alumni Association joins us in studio live to talk about the giving season and what comes next. Good morning and happy Monday. It is December 27th, 858 this morning, 67 degrees. We know a lot of people. A lot of people are flying out today or coming back today and Ooh, I'm sorry if you're one of those people. That's right. So if you have a flight later today, you got to keep an eye on your itinerary because flights are being canceled all over the country, not only because of severe weather in the Northeast, but also because of the Omicron variant. So this is a live look at what is called the misery map. What an awful name. <laughs> Thanks to <laughs> flightaware.com. So far, only a few cancellations. I think, what is it? Six cancellations, 18 delays, though. We're going to be. Yeah, that's here in San Antonio. Ooh. That's only 2% of the flights here in San Antonio with 18 delay, 18 delays and six mm -hmm. cancellations. So not as severe. We're not really as other parts of the exactly, country. Exactly. But still, if you are flying out today, tomorrow, just keep an eye on those flights, uh, you know, to make sure that everything is okay before you just head to the airport. Right, the misery map is not something, uh, you know, that you want to start your day with. Ugh, misery <laughs> map, what an awful name. We're going to have so many more details coming up in your 9 and 9, but for now, we're going to take a live look out at the Alamo City. Can we call this a misery map, uh, uh, Katie Blake, 67 uh, degrees? Yep, <laughs> yep, 67, gross out there, humidity is high and this type of morning we're going to continue to see this for much of the week. We really don't have another strong front until this weekend and you know I'm just, we don't have a, a strong front until next year because it'll be on like the 2nd of January 2022. So that's fun to say. In the meantime, we will have to contend with more morning fog this week. In and around San Antonio, visibility has been just fine today, but west of 35, that's where the fog really became pretty dense this morning. And anywhere you see that red color, so from Rock Springs over to Del Rio, even Uvalde, just north of Eagle Pass, that is dense fog. That's visibility less than a quarter of a mile, um, and that can create dangerous driving conditions. So west of 35, make sure you have, give yourself a few extra minutes if you'll be heading out within the next couple of hours. Again, around Bear County, visibility is just fine. 10 miles from Randolph over to Port SA, 8 miles at the airport, and I believe that's because we've had a pretty decent breeze in place this morning. Nonetheless, a dense fog advisory will be in place for San Antonio Bear County all the hill country and then west to um, Valverde County down to uh, Maverick County and Eagle Pass until 11 a.m. So we'll continue to see damp gray mornings and warm afternoons pretty much all week. New Year's Eve will preview here. It does look like it will be a warm and humid night with some more you guessed it, fog developing late New Year's Eve night into New Year's Day. And then our next strong front looks to arrive sometime on New Year's Day, the first to the second. We'll take a look at that front, get you what you need to know for the week ahead coming up in just a bit, guys. All right, Katie Blake, thank you so much. Taking a live look out at the roadways. There are a lot of people on the roads this morning, 3.30 in the morning, all the way up to 7 a.m. Still, roadways are filled. So if you are out and about, if you have to travel home or see friends and family, make sure to drive safe, buckle up. All right, we have a lot going on in and around San Antonio. Stop, top stories we are following today. The search continues for Lena Keel right here in the Alamo City. The three year old girl missing now for a week and still no sign of her and no relief for her family. Lena Sadar Kill was last seen at her family's apartment complex that's on the city's northwest side last Monday. SAPD says they won't stop searching for Lena and their resources are being redirected to be as proactive as possible. Federal assistance is coming from all directions, the FBI, even Border Patrol. In this case, the U.S. Marshal's Office offering a $5,000 reward for information. In addition, Crime Stoppers in the Islamic Center of San Antonio offering a combined reward of $150,000 if a tip helps lead authorities to the young girl.
New this morning, a man is in the hospital after a carjacking and a shooting on the city's west side. It all happened around 11 last night at an Exxon gas station on Calabria and General McMullen. That's where police tell us the suspect approached a man at one of the gas pumps, shot him two times, then stole his rental pickup truck. The suspect later crashed into three vehicles on South General McMullen and then ran off. The man who was shot was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Investigators are still looking for the suspect. And new this morning, a man in the hospital after a terrifying rollover crash on the city's northeast side. It happened around 2.30 this morning in the eastbound lane of Loop 1604 between O'Connor and Judson Road. Police say a man driving a pickup truck hit the back of another pickup truck and then rolled off the highway. The driver in the truck rolled over. That rolled over is going to be okay, isn't in the hospital. The other driver was not hurt. At this time, investigators do not believe alcohol was a factor in this crash. Today, flight cancellations, a big talker and unruling passengers are facing a new kind of punishment. Plus, Tesla owners might notice a popular feature no longer exists. Here's today's 9 and 9. After nearly 6,000 flights were canceled or delayed this weekend, more disruptions are expected throughout today. Officials say the Omicron variant of COVID is to blame for staffing shortages. A United spokesperson says still unclear when operations could return to normal. COVID-19 cases are continuing to emerge on cruise ships. Carnival Cruise Line Royal Caribbean and MSC Cruises are among those with clusters of cases on board, resulting in increased safety measures being put in place. The CDC is monitoring and studying the cases on board in an effort to learn more about the Omicron variant. If you're looking to get a passport soon, make sure to bring an extra $20. Prices are set to increase starting today. That brings the average cost of a passport for most adults to $165. The State Department says the increase is necessary to make sure passports can continue to be produced at a steady pace. Air travelers who create issues while aboard planes could lose their TSA pre-check credentials. The FFA says pre-check is a privilege, not a right. There are about 5,800 complaints of unruly behavior by passengers in 2021. Most were related to mask rules. The FAA plans to share those incidents with the TSA to begin the process of revoking pre-check privileges. The annual rush is on to return those unwanted Christmas gifts. Many prominent retailers have increased the amount of time shoppers have to make those returns. Amazon now allows any item purchased between October 1st and December 31st to be returned through the end of January. Tesla is disabling a feature that allowed drivers to play games on a touchscreen while driving. The decision comes after the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration concerned about driver distractions launched an investigation last week. Home insurance premiums for the new year appear to be rising faster than inflation. According to the Insurance Information Institute, the average homeowner may see a 4% increase on the cost of their homeowner's policy for 2022. Texas homeowners saw an 18% spike in prices from 2017 to 2020. Today celebrates an often unappreciated traditional holiday food, fruitcake. While the origin of the day itself is not known, fruitcakes themselves go all the way back to ancient Rome. As the NFL regular season nears its end, the New Orleans Saints and the Miami Dolphins going head to head tonight in Monday Night Football with hopes of making it to the playoffs. Kickoff set for 7.15 tonight, and that's today's 9 and 9. All right, well, the holidays, the season of giving, philanthropic efforts have been impressive by so many organizations in and around the Alamo City. Leadership San Antonio Alumni Association has been one of the local groups who has stepped up and helped out. Ashley Harris with LSA Alumni Association joins us live in studio. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So for those who don't know, what is LSA and what is your guys' mission? Leadership San Antonio is a joint program between the San Antonio Chamber and the Hispanic Chamber, and we've been around for 47 years. We're actually the oldest leadership program in Texas. LSA, Austin, Dallas, and Houston wish they were us. <laughs> and uh, we tackle uh, issues every single year. So about 50 to 60 class members every single year, they break out into issues, and they tackle not only the great things about San Antonio, but the challenges we face and what it takes to fix them. Some really big names locally coming out of this organization. So how can people get involved? It's a program that you apply for. So you really kind of have to be a little bit further in your career, but we it's open to everyone. So not just uh, business and community leaders, but nonprofit leaders and people who want to get engaged. 
All right, so now to the charitable efforts. You guys have gone above and beyond during the holiday season. What exactly did you do, and why did you pick that specific sector to help out in? So every single LSA class says they're the best class ever. So what the Alumni Association did was we threw down a challenge, and we went to go uh, raise money for the food bank, and the class that raised the money, the most money, got the official title of best class ever. And some of the classes went a little insane. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> to say the least, but uh, they stepped up in a big way, and in five days, we raised $43,177.80 uh, for, uh, for the San Antonio Food Bank locally. So why the food bank exactly, and what class won? That's a great question. So obviously this time of year, uh, there's a lot of need. And so we chose the food bank because we knew we're still dealing with the effects of COVID. We're still dealing with a lot of those challenges. And so let's put our money where our mouth is and really help an organization that does so much for the community. And I got to give it to Leadership San Antonio. Class 40 <laughs> is the best class ever. They raised $20,000 of that 43. And Almost half of that was actually in the last 30 minutes of the no fundraiser. Kidding. So they came in big and strong. Ambitious people who are leaders. Uh, shocker that they're competitive, right? <laughs> <laughs> Little crazy. <laughs> hey, crazy is good when you're raising money. So any big plans coming up for, for you guys? The Alumni Association will continue to have our quarterly events, and that's not just fundraising, but it's also networking and it's engagement and, you know, any way that the alumni uh, across the community, 47 years, can come out and get involved, we encourage you guys to do so. But the, you know what, there's also so many other ways to give back. It's not just through the Alumni Association. You know, 2021 was the year of the great resignation, right? Everybody stopping and looking at what they're doing and does it fulfill them? So let's make 2022 the year of the great introspection. Mm -hmm. And what are we doing to leave San Antonio a better place than how we found it? Find a nonprofit that you love, find something that motivates you and get involved. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for joining us in studio. Yeah. And for all, all our viewers watching, for any of this information, the full interview, just check out ksat.com later this morning. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. Time now, 9, 10, 66 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, a look back at some of this year's most memorable moments brought to us by you, the viewer. That's coming up in our What's Up South Texas segment. But first, we're taking you live to the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. Tiffany Huertas has details on why blood donations are so important this time of the year. Welcome back. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center has been battling low blood supply all year long. And during the holiday season, they typically see a lower number of donors. So they have been hosting different events all month long to try to get more blood donations. That's right. Tiffany Huertas joining us live from the Blood Center to find out if they've reached their goals and what is their current situation? Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Max and Sarah. The bad news is that they have not reached their goal yet. The good news is that there's a lot of people here this morning, but not enough. There's still some empty chairs, but if you want to donate, there's a QR code on your screen right now that will take you to the Blood Center's page. And to talk more about this is Francine with the Blood Center. Good morning, Francine. Talk to us about the current blood supply situation in Texas. I'm just so appreciative that you are out here today because we could definitely use more donors today, tomorrow, through the week. So right now we're at about a two day supply of blood. Our goal is about, uh, well, honestly, we'd love to be at a seven day supply, but right now we're at a two day supply. If we could get to that three day supply, that would be in incredible. And this is blood that's needed to serve our community patients that are in need. We don't want to see hospitals having to delay surgeries or postpone any type of patient care because there isn't the blood supply that we need to have. And yes, we are very grateful that we have a couple of donors out here, but we have more empty beds than we do donors. We need about 200 more donors to come in every single day. We have five locations in San Antonio, one in New Braunfels, and one in Victoria. Schedule an appointment, come out and donate. We've covered a few events this month. Talk to us about how those events went and what future events you all are planning to host. Yeah, we're very excited about the things that we have coming up. In January, if you come donate in January, but don't wait, come now. Um, we'll be giving you a free Creamy Creations ice cream from HEB. So we're very grateful for our partnership at HEB. They're also going to be hosting several blood drives at HEB. And we're also giving away a 
long sleeve t-shirt. You know, hopefully it'll get chilly one of these days and you can wear your long sleeve t-shirts. That's courtesy of South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. And this weekend, we've partnered with Santico's. We're very grateful for our Santico's partnership. And if you donate at any of the Santico's locations, you'll get a free movie ticket. And so lots of good movies right now this season. So why not donate blood, get a free movie ticket, come out and donate. And lastly, how important is this blood donations? We know that it's going to impact cancer patients, um, trauma patients. Talk to us about that. Lots of people don't realize what the blood is used for and the importance of having that adequate blood supply for our community. But you're right. It goes to help cancer patients that are undergoing treatments, um, expecting mothers that have complications during um, labor and delivery, surgeries, um, and of course, ac accidents, um, car, car accidents and, and victims um, that, that need blood too. Thank you so much. So again, that QR code is on your screen. All the information, you can also find it on ksat.com and we'll have more at noon. Back to you guys in the studio. All right. Thank you, Tiffany. Definitely really appreciate it. Back here though, 66 degrees. Seems calm and quiet out there, except for you were saying west of 35, so fog advisory? That's where we've had the dense fog so far this morning, and there are still some spots with visibility down to zero miles. So uh, that'll be an issue for our friends west of 35, but here in town, things have been in pretty good shape so far today. Uh, what's not so Ooh. good is the Yuck. pollen count. Here it is, uh, it came in around 840 this morning actually just sent out this pollen count and a forecast update to the KSAT Weather Authority app just a few minutes ago. So if you have that, you got that push alert, you got a little sneak peek at the pollen count there. Not good news today. Mountain Cedar is high with a count of 5,610. Molds are also high today. Molds were low yesterday, so this number has jumped up. Mountain Cedar is actually down a little bit from where it was yesterday, but still in high territory. Here's a look at current visibility. Things are in good shape for most of us. And in around San Antonio, things are just fine as far as fog is concerned. But again, it's off to the west where you see this red color. So from Rock Springs down through a portion of western Real County and then to you Valley, the visibility is still down to zero, but you saw an update there. So this area of fog is starting to shrink and go away just a little bit, and that trend will continue through the morning. If you're west of 35 and you'll be out on the roads the next couple of hours, just keep in mind you may run into some patchy dense fog. 67 now at the airport, just shy of 70 in New Braunfels and 65 in Catula. A look at your day today. It will be another unseasonably warm afternoon as we shake the clouds into the afternoon. Temperatures for a lot of us jumping into the upper 70s. Some folks will be even warmer than that as skies clear a little bit faster, generally uh, south of Highway 90. So we're forecasting right around 77 today for San Antonio. Our average high this time of year is 63. So our morning temperatures today actually where our afternoon temperatures should be. So uh, we've been unseasonably warm for a good portion of December. Uh, your mind's not been playing tricks on you. It has been warmer than average. And a big reason for that is the La Nina pattern that we have in place across North America. This generally leads uh, to dry and warm winter weather for us here in Texas and really across the southern tier of the country. The reason for this is because both of the jet streams, the Pacific jet stream and the polar jet stream, which is responsible for pulling the colder air down from Canada, both of those in this type of pattern do get stuck up off to the north. And we will continue to see this through the work week. So the rest of this week, just very subtle changes to the weather. Overall, very warm all the way through Friday, New Year's Eve and even New Year's Day. It won't be until late New Year's Day and then to the 2nd of January that we'll see our next front arrive as this pattern finally starts to change a bit. That jet stream will break and drop down to the south and that will allow for a slightly colder air mass uh, to move into the central tier of the country. Actually looks like it's going to be a pretty significant temperature drop for us at this time. We'll likely be tweaking these temperatures over the next couple of days, but bottom line, expect a warm and muggy work week and then our next big set of changes in terms of cooler air by the upcoming weekend to start 2022. Current look at satellite and radar. No rain out there. A little bit of mist is definitely possible. We've mainly just got a lot of low cloud cover. Just like the past couple of days, this low cloud cover will gradually start to break up as we get closer to lunchtime, even more so into the afternoon. But keep in mind, if you see the sun quicker, you will be warmer. So some mid to upper 80s possible south of Highway 90, where that cloud cover is likely to break up sooner. If you hold on to clouds after lunchtime with some later clearing, your high temperature is likely limited to the upper 70s today. We'll continue to wash winch repeat winch 
that's, you know what I'm trying to say. Over the next yeah. few days, really the only subtle, oh my gosh, I just disappeared into thin air. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we do this all over again for much of the week and then potentially colder and windy Sunday behind that strong cold front. We'll keep a close eye on that for you, guys. All right, Katie Blake, thank you so much. Time now, 921, 66 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, a look back at some of the year's most memorable What's Up South Texas stories. Good morning and welcome back. It is that time of year again where we reflect on some of the most memorable moments you, the community, have brought us on What's Up South Texas. Love these stories. Here's Daphne Gray with the roll call for the year 2021. What's up, South Texas? Exploded with fun in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> with majorette dancing. We do lots of back bends and pop outs and death drops, two touches. The Music Man. So much good feelings from serving and especially seeing the people with smiles and singing along. It's like somebody dancing. Like the wooden guitar pick maker. I usually follow the grain of the wood and I'll start something and I don't know what it is until it's done. The environmental skateboarder. It's very euphoric. It's, it's, it's a big, big escape. A taxi company owned and operated by this strong woman. Sound like alert and that's what you must be when you are driving. <laughs> A remarkable graffiti artist. Anything that you do with a little bit of passion becomes a work of art. A Bear County deputy luchador. Once I put this mask on, it's a whole, totally a whole different world. The instructor behind the only high school Cajunto band in San Antonio. We saw how two successful women grew up poor, but now they give all they can. If you have the same opportunities, you just have to go and get it. That word impossible is there because it is possible. What'd I say, right? We saw how San Antonio police officer gives back through the loss of his partner. Anything that I could keep these kids engaged in outside school activities besides drugs, violence. <laughs> a father with a special musical bond with his daughter. We saw how a once homeless man serves others experiencing homelessness. For somebody to get one day clean or one day sober. And how an Air Force veteran provides housing for homeless vets. If this guy can do it, maybe I could do it. How a Cibolo restaurant stepped up for the first responders during the pandemic. I don't think we ever had a thought of, you know, giving up. God's hand was in it. What I'm looking at is a bunch of toys, okay? And how one little girl gave a big Christmas to families in need. <laughs> I think this is going to a happy ending for all of the kids. <laughs> Your stories are what What's Up South Texas is all about. That's just God working through me, you know. I just walk down the road. But if, if, it, if God inspires you to get up and want to walk too, God bless you. For What's Up South Texas. You put your heart to it, you put your mind to it, you can get it. You don't have to move mountains, but you can make a difference. You don't have to conquer the world, right, for what you'd like to see happen. Every little bit helps. I'm Daphne Gray, and have a happy new year. I love those stories. Yeah, great job, Jaffney. Time now, 927, 67 degrees out. Okay, so what are these giant trucks spraying? Huh. That story next in your morning headlines. And later, I'll look back at some of the top stories that happened right here in the Alamo City. Welcome back. A lot going on across the country in your morning headlines. A new way to combat COVID and a cop takes on a cow. Ooh, plus COVID didn't stop one family from having Christmas dinner. We'll show you how. All right, so first up, we start with the giant trucks fogging the street in China. So these look similar to what we use here in the United States for mosquito abatement, but these trucks, they're not spraying for mosquitoes, they're spraying for COVID. City officials are taking extra precautions on top of the restrictions that have already been put in place because China has recorded nearly 700 cases since early December, making it one of the largest city outbreaks in China since Wuhan became the epicenter of the global pandemic back in 2019. And oh, by the way, it's unclear what kind of chemicals or disinfectants are being used in the sprayer trucks. And Sarah Weddington, a Texas lawyer who, as a 26-year-old, successfully argued the landmark abortion rights case, 
Roe v. Wade before the U.S. Supreme Court. She passed away on Sunday. She was 76 years old. A former colleague of Weddington said she died in her sleep at her Austin home. She had been in poor health for some time. Weddington was born in Abilene and attended law school at the University of Texas. She successfully argued the landmark abortion case before the high court twice, resulting in that 7-2 ruling that legalized abortion nationwide. Her death comes as the Supreme Court is considering a case over Mississippi's ban on abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. That's widely considered to be the most serious challenge in years to the Roe v. decision. Now, Weddington later wrote a book on Roe v. Wade, gave lectures, even teaching courses at the University of Texas at Austin and Texas Women's University. All right. Well, a oh, oh, my gosh, a California Highway Patrol officer had to channel his inner troubadour last week in a move that any bullfighter would envy. Officer Pratt evaded an angry bull. The incident recorded on the officer's dash camera captures a challenge faced by patrolling rural northeastern California. Troopers regularly handle calls about large farm animals wandering onto the highway in that area. Huh. Ouch. Yeah. So one family's Christmas dinner had an unusual twist this year. Cami LaRock started feeling symptoms of COVID right before Christmas, but she wasn't going to let that ruin the fun for her and her family. So LaRock got creative, came up with an idea to eat Christmas dinner in a bubble. LaRock posted her idea on TikTok, and it's racked up more than 7 million views in just two days. I mean, don't leave her in there. Like people in the comments were saying, don't leave anyone in the bubble. But honestly, the bubble was a great idea and it really helped us celebrate Christmas in the in the best and safest way that we thought was possible. Here's the thing. Cammy <laughs> Cammy ended up testing oh negative. So everyone is safe. Uh, one thing to remember, <laughs> if you do find yourself in a bubble anytime soon, Cammy says that it gets pretty warm pretty fast, so try to avoid wearing any Christmas sweaters and avoid wearing scarves. You know what? I, uh, I commend I her. Do. Yeah, it's very extra, but very safe, very safe. And you know what? That. The Bubble Boy, a movie way too <laughs> early for its time. But her saying it got too warm in there. 67 out there. It doesn't feel like Christmas time. No. Um, running the AC today and yesterday and the day before that, Katie Boy. It's going to continue to run this week. We're not talking turning the heat back on until Saturday night into Sunday of the upcoming weekend. So your AC will get a nice workout this week. Yeah, I uh, probably warm in the bubble. And also this is a word people don't like probably moist in the bubble <laughs> as well. Much ventilation. That's a cute idea. Uh, speaking of moist, gosh, I hate that word. I've managed to use it twice. Uh, it is very humid out there, so that's led to some more fog developing across the area this morning. Dense fog advisories are in place for San Antonio, Bear County, Comal County, Kendall County. All our counties in gray here. This is in place until 11, but I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see some of these uh, being dropped a little bit early because the fog is starting to clear up gradually. It's it's been most dense west of 35 so far today, and we've still got some dense fog from Rock Springs and Edwards County down to Uvalde there right along Highway 90. So some dense fog still hanging on west of 35, but as far as visibility goes here in town, visibility goes here in town. We're doing just fine. 67 at the airport, 61 in Carrizo Springs. It is overcast out there, humid, and winds are out of the south um, at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. The breeze that's starting to pick up will help any of that lingering fog to clear up over the next couple hours as well. Temperatures across the country quite quite warm across much of Texas and uh, the deep south there, but there is some colder air off to the north. It's uh, going to slowly make its way here, but it'll take until the weekend and the start of 2022 for us to feel any difference. We'll talk about a strong front heading our way toward the end of the week in just a bit, guys. All right, taking a live look. Lots of traffic. The roads, there is a lot of traffic over there. Uh, looks like the closure on one of the streets right off of 1604 at Babcock. So if you are heading in that direction, if you're visiting friends or family today, we know a lot of people are on holiday vacation. Make sure to drive safe. Be smart. All right, from the COVID-19 vaccines first being administered to the February freeze in Texas to Fiesta making a return to UTSA's historic season, a lot has happened in 2021. Though this year seemed to race by quickly, it was filled with a lot of ups and a lot of downs, not only for us here in South Texas, but the entire country. Here's a look back at what we've been through over the last 12 months. We're 
procedure and decorum in Congress shattered today when a peaceful protest turned into a siege. Let's have trial by combat. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. This way. The Capitol went into lockdown with members of Congress inside. A Universal City man facing charges in connection with the breach at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. 52 year old Stephen Capuccio. Good morning, everyone. It's a winter wonderland out there. It's just a beautiful sight to see. The unprecedented winter weather. Our city transformed into white. CPS Energy says it's under orders to begin rotating outages. What happened this week to our fellow Texans is absolutely unacceptable. Acceptable. The White House facing a surge in undocumented teens crossing the border. Federal officials today announcing the opening of a second emergency shelter for unaccompanied migrant children right here in San Antonio. An active shooter killed at the airport after San Antonio police say he was firing shots at random, aiming at an officer and at one of the terminals. People as young as 16 are eligible for the vaccines. The city of San Antonio began offering them this morning with no reservations needed. Viva People say it's great to see life getting back to normal. Chicken on a stick! We are going to party tonight! He emerged from the home holding two large handguns, firing at us and an SUV with his own family inside. By my count, six times as we scattered in different directions. Shots fired 200 block Norium Street. I'm with News Media, KSAT 12. We really saw no emotion for McCain for much of this trial. Oh, this is a live picture right there. You see McCain with an elbow to the bailiff. Making headlines this morning, 17 area school districts headed back to classroom today. <laughs> New school and a new level of excitement as SAISD teachers and students fully return back to the classroom in person. A humanitarian emergency. Sky 12 capturing these images. More than 12,000 migrants crowded under the Del Rio International Bridge. High water has led to heartbreak in East Barrow County. Two people believed to have died after being swept away by rushing water today. Embattled president and CEO Paula Gold Williams will resign next year. We are learning more information when it comes to the deadly drought racing event in Kerrville. The two people killed were children. Eight others were also injured. Came up across the crowd, hit the kids, hit the other people that were there. And our city has really been celebrating Dia de los Muertos all week long. The CDC's director now endorsing the recommendation for children 5 through 11 to get the vaccine. There is no reason to wait. Dr. Lumali Apache says the vaccine is safe. Are you excited? Can you feel it? We all right there. Jeff Trailer as he gets his Gatorade bath tonight in the Alamo Dome. The UTSA Roadrunners are Conference USA champions for the first time. All right. God, I have chills from that last yeah. one. I love that. All right. So as we get ready to celebrate the new year, we do want to remind you the use of fireworks in the city is illegal. If you are caught using fireworks within city limits, you could get fined up to $2,000. If you see someone using fireworks, you're asked to call SAFD's non-emergency line. Again, don't call 911. Call the non-emergency line. Write it down now. That number on your screen, 210-207-7273. Time now is 940, 67 degrees out. You're watching GMSA at 9. All right, we have your full weekend sports headlines right after the break. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Welcome back. Remember all the talk about the offense being a slump, Amari Cooper calling that radio station and saying he didn't get the ball enough? Those talks are over because the Cowboys put an exclamation point on their NFC East title, blasting the Washington football team, and they did it on national TV. Dallas getting to work early, scoring three touchdowns in each of the first two quarters. They led 42 to 7 at halftime, and when the smoke had cleared, the final from AT&T Stadium was Dallas 56, Washington 14. Dak Prescott 28 of 39, 330 yards, four scores. Dallas now 11 and 4, also crushing Washington's playoff hopes. Cooper Rush even got in the game. He threw a fifth scoring strike, helping the Cowboys reach 50 points for the first time since the Super Bowl all the way back in 1993. So now the Cowboys sit in second place in the NFC, and they're just one game behind Green Bay for the first top spot. So next up, 
a matchup with the Arizona Cardinals. That game set for next Sunday afternoon at 325. Here we go. From the field to the court, San Antonio Spurs also a dismantling last night. They were shorthanded in their return. Remember, DeJounte in that health and safety protocol, but that did not stop the Silver and Black from getting a huge high-scoring victory. The Detroit Pistons were in town, and, well, they probably didn't want to be. Silver and Black wasted no time taking control early. We saw Derek White to Jacopoto. Two-handed slam. Spurs were up 13-12, and that would really set the precedent for the rest of the night. Keldon Johnson. Four of four from three. He finished with 27 points to lead the Spurs in their highest scoring game of the season. They beat Detroit 144 to 109. Yes, the Spurs scored 144 points. San Antonio led by as much as 30 in the first half. They built a 25 point lead for the third straight game. San Antonio now winning three straight, winning four of five, moving into 10th place in the West. The Spurs had a season-high 39 assists. Trey Jones with 11 assists, a career high for him. Derek White with 10. The Spurs this is my favorite number, shooting 56% from the field, winning their seventh straight home game over the Pistons. We did a good job. We had 39 assists again, and after being off a bit, the guys' uh, mental approach was good. Uh, they came out aggressively and kept it for most of the 48 minutes, so that was nice to see. We just wanted to take care of business, you know, do what we do, play defense, share the ball, hit shots, and, you know, um, you know, definitely just keep the pressure on them. No matter how much we got up, just kind of keep the pressure on them. Don't really give them no hope, you know, to, to, that they can stick into the game. We knew it was going to be a weird game. Um, you know, they had guys testing positive today even. Um, you know, there's a ref out even, and then, you know, we had DeJounte out. So we knew it was going to be a little different uh, of a game, but, um, you know, we had to, you know, continue to prepare the same way like we always do, um, knowing that it's going to be a weird season and fun couple of past days uh, celebrating Christmas with our families and, and whatnot. But, um, you know, we had to get back to work tonight. All right, and still a lot of work to do. Remember, 82 games this season. Look ahead at the week coming up. San Antonio Spurs tonight are welcoming the Jazz to town. Tip-off set for 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Then Wednesday, Spurs take it on the Miami Heat. And on Friday, the Grizz are in town, followed by a rematch with the Pistons a week from Saturday. Here we go. We're in the midst of bowl season and my favorite bowl, the Alamo Bowl. City of San Antonio set to host the Valero Alamo Bowl in just a few days. And it should be a great matchup. This year's matchup features the 15th-ranked Oregon Ducks and the 14th-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. Both teams coming into town with 10 wins apiece. Kickoff set for Wednesday night at 8:15 at, of course, the Alamo Dome. You said you even stayed up to watch the Cowboys game. I did, and it was a boring one. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy because go boys, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Katie, for those for those fans coming in on Wednesday, yeah. pack shorts, right? Uh, yeah, short sleeves. Don't bring your winter gear at all. Um, also, I need someone from our graphics department to send huh. me the Oregon logo. Right, you got it. It's a green O. So. Um, it kind of works. I, huh. I quite literally just typed that in and well done. made it green. <laughs> Because um, we have some logos, NFL and college logos, built into our weather graphics. But no there was respect no for the ducks over here. Um, so I couldn't <laughs> choose a side. So uh -oh. I tried it. You know how it's kind of wider? Mm, yeah. I tried. Um, it looks like you're playing tic tac toe. Think, I don't think it quite translates. Yeah, it's not that great. <laughs> um, so Wednesday evening, 8 15 kickoff, temperatures dropping into the 60s there, partly cloudy. That is the time Wednesday night into Thursday is the time this week where we may be treated to a brief drop in humidity. So I actually don't think it will be terribly uncomfortable. Uh, but if we've got, you know, fans coming in today, tomorrow, it'll be warm and uh, warm and muggy here in South Central Texas. High temperatures yesterday, Sunday, big spread here. 79 was the high in New Braunfels, 76 in San Antonio, but places like Pleasanton, Upper 80s, 90 in Catula, 87 in Laredo. The big difference in high temperatures yesterday was because of the cloud cover. Where the clouds clear up quicker, you're able to warm up a bit more, and then you have higher temperatures into the afternoon. We'll see a very similar setup today with the low cloud deck that is in place this morning. It will gradually shrink as we head into the afternoon. Those that hold on to clouds longer, though, will likely see high temperatures mid to upper 70s. Those with more sunshine, we're talking mid to upper 80s. So just keep that in mind but we do expect like the past couple of days for the sun to come out sooner down well to the south of Highway 90. Places like Carrizo Springs, Catula, even Pleasanton could be a bit warmer this afternoon. Overall, 
it's going to be unseasonably, unseasonably warm and humid no matter where you are today. 67 at the airport now, 87% humidity. South winds at 10 miles per hour. We held on to a pretty good breeze all morning long. And that's what I think kept dense fog from developing uh, really around a good portion of the metro area in San Antonio. But we still do have some dense fog west of 35, so please do keep that in mind. But we'll continue to see any fog that's still out there now clear up over the next couple hours. 62 now in Kerrville, also 62 in Uvalde. So temperatures generally in the 60s across the area. Our dew points are also in the 60s. So when the air temperature and the dew point are that close together, our air is very saturated. And that's a big reason why we've had the fog this morning and generally just damp conditions to start the day. These dew point numbers will really not be changing much this week. Again, Wednesday night into Thursday is when we'll see a weak front try to nudge in. That'll drop our humidity very briefly, but then it will be muggy again to end the week and start the new year. So Saturday, New Year's Day still muggy, but look what happens Saturday into Sunday. Our dew point temperatures tank with our next strong cold front that is set to arrive early in 2022. Quick look across the country. All the precipitation in the cold air is up across really the northern tier of the country. 24 below right now in Cup Bank, Montana, 4 below in Bismarck, North Dakota. So there is some cold air off to the north, but it's going to be stuck up there all week long. So all the way through the work week, we are stuck in a warm, humid air mass. Our afternoon highs will be in the 70s and 80s here. Things don't change until the weekend. Here is New Year's Day. New Year's Day afternoon, we're still warm, but late in the day on Saturday into Sunday, that's when our next Friday is expected to move through and that's when we'll see our next pretty noticeable temperature drop. I'll show you the seven day coming up shortly. Another look at your day today. 77 this afternoon with clearing skies overall humid with a lingering breeze. But look at that temperature drop Saturday to Sunday. It will be much cooler windy with dry air in place by January 2nd. We'll be right back. Well, the end of the year is only a few days away, so what are the most important things you should do before 2022? We'll tell you tomorrow in GMSA. All right, so Christmas is over. Merry Christmas to both of you and to everyone watching. Thank yes, you. We didn't say it already. Did you guys decorate your homes? Oh, I know Katie's like yeah. the day. Did you? I decorated before Thanksgiving. What about yes. You? Yeah. I, uh, You're with two extra people right now, yeah, Max. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we decorated. So before Thanksgiving? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So when do you plan to take them down. <laughs> um, I'm thinking mid January, hopefully like I know I know January 6 is like the official end of Christmas right. with the epiphany, according to the Christian calendar. If we're getting technical, yep. um, that's the three Kings day, but hopefully around then. OK, hopefully. Yeah, you don't want to be the person in during Valentine's Day with the Christmas. Oh, <laughs> that's never have you look. been that person? No, OK, <laughs> I haven't because then I just feel like kind of yucky. I don't know uh, whenever I feel like it. That's we'll fair. We'll whenever see. your cat. There was a news. There was a news angle to this. The pros say January 6th is the cutoff. But, ah. you know, 2021, 2022, keep them up. Keep us jolly. <laughs>